As South Africa anticipates the State of the Nation address, we take a closer look at the four ANC men who have led the country. Whether you are a colored, an Indian, a white man, or an African, let us all say, we are one country, we are one nation. Having inherited a fledgling democracy, Nelson Mandela's predominant focus was the transition into an equal and just society. He also addressed the need to bolster employment, improve the economy and reduce inequality. The unemployment rate dropped from 20% to just less than 17% between 1994 and 1995. By 1997, however, it was almost 23%. At the end of Mandela's presidency in 1999, GDP had increased by just more than 13% at market value. In 1998, the GDP to debt ratio was close to 47%. The World Bank Guinea Coefficient Index, used to measure inequality, was 0.59 in 1993. It dropped to 0.58 by 2000, showing an increase in perceived equality. We must say this again that the damage done during a period covering three centuries cannot be undone in three years. In 1999, then-President Thabo Mbeki addressed the need for patriotism. He also brought up the subversion of democracy through weak work ethics and corruption. While there has been an increase in patriotism, the constant outbreaks of xenophobia over the past decade are an example of toxic nationalism and deep societal divides. The participation rate, the percentage of the labor force who are working or actively searching for work, dropped from 59.4% to 56.2%. Under Mbeki, GDP grew just over 104% between 1999 and 2008. In 2008, when his presidency ended, the GDP to debt ratio was 26.3%. Following the ANC's NEC decision that Mbeki was no longer fit to lead the country and his subsequent resignation, Khalema Motlante served as president for the remaining 226 days of Mbeki's term. We are determined to move the second centenary with a more rejuvenated organization that is strategically positioned to continue to lead the people of our country. In 2015, then-President Jacob Zuma, who took over as leader of the country in 2009, addressed ANC members at the party's birthday celebrations. He spoke about economic freedom, land redistribution and challenges in the education sector. By the end of Zuma's tenure in 2018, South Africa's GDP had enjoyed a 77.5% increase. While this seems impressive, it's a somewhat superficial number when taking into account the 2009 global recovery and his inheritance of a budget surplus. Increased government spending results in an increased GDP. In 2018, the GDP to debt ratio was 56%. The metric pass rate increased 13% during his tenure. Zuma also introduced the Restitution of Land Rights Amendment Bill on May 23, 2013. This, comrades and friends, is a decisive moment for our country as we begin a new decade, a decade of hope and a decade of expectation and also a decade of promise and opportunity. President Cyril Ramaphosa said the ANC would address several issues at its birthday celebrations in Kimberley in January. Gender-based violence, land expropriation without compensation, and challenges faced by state-owned enterprises such as ESCOM were the main focus. Ramaphosa has a difficult task ahead of him, with more than 170,000 crimes against women committed during the 2018-2019 period. 
Changes to Section 25 of the Constitution which relates to land ownership have gained momentum in Parliament. But official government statistics show 8.3 million hectares of commercial agricultural land have been redistributed since 1994. This makes up 9.7% of commercial agricultural land in South Africa. Since the start of the restitution program to the December 31, 1998 cutoff date, close to 80,000 land claims were lodged, 77% of which have been finalized by 2017. The current GDP number stands at just more than 3 trillion rand, but Ramaphosa faces high unemployment rates and an extreme wealth gap. Last year, the GDP to debt ratio was 61.5%. Failing SOEs such as ESCOM and SAA pose an enormous challenge for the President. Ramaphosa faces a mammoth task as President.